welcome to AATCM, the emergency medicine channel. Today, let us discuss about one of the hypertensive emergencies which can occur and come to emergency room. That is posterior reversible encephalopathy syndrome or PRESS. PRESS is a clinical and neurological disease which involves an acute onset of neurological symptoms with main characteristic features like headache, visual disturbances, altered mental status and seizures. It is due to vasogenic edema of the brain. Now we can see the risk factors for press. Anybody who is having high BP which is not getting controlled or exacerbated due to any reason can develop press. Other than that, conditions like postpartum period, eclampsia, preeclampsia, acute glomerular nephritis with hypertensive crisis, hemolytic uremic syndrome, thrombocytopenic thrombotic purpura, SLE and its exacerbations, sepsis. Now, there are a lot of drugs also can present with press features. Press can affect both adult and children, but the most common ages are in between 20 to 65 years. Clinical factors associated with press are high blood pressure, more than 25% of baseline, sudden increment in BP, more than 25% of the baseline, fluid overload, more than 10% of the total body weight, and creatine increase, more than 1.8 milligram per deciliter. And associate, associated conditions can also include reversible cerebral vasoconstriction syndrome and postpartum angiopathy in ladies. So normally press present with a patient who is having sudden increase in systemic hypertension. Sometimes metabolic disorders or some drugs we have seen in the previous chart can also present with press like clinical syndromes. Now we can see the pathophysiology. It is mainly due to altered cerebrovascular autoregulation and that leads to hyperperfusion of certain areas and ultimately it will present with endothelial damage and stroke like features. Normally press is a reversible condition 70 to 90 percent of the patients it will either revert without any treatment or with prompt treatment it can be completely reversible. Rarely some of the patients can have persistent deficits like they can develop epilepsy we can call it a scar epilepsy some motor deficits it becomes a stroke then like that very rarely patient can have persistent symptoms. Whenever patient present with high BP, confusion, focal neurological deficits, seizures and visual disturbance that is one of the major feature altered mental status we can think about uh, press in emergency room and when we are taking history we have to talk, discuss about whether the patient had high BP in the past, whether it was controlled, patient had missed any tablets, any kidney disease which can lead to hypertension, autoimmune diseases like SLE, eclampsia or preeclampsia pre features in pregnant ladies, sepsis, any new medication started like previously we have shown in the slide or any other clinical events which aggravated the patient's previous conditions including hypertension and patients are taking any immunosuppressants, uh, stimulants, other drugs, chemotherapy, erythropoietin, IVIG, 
CSF, GMCSF, interleukins or antiretroviral therapy, all these things can precipitate an attack of press. On neurological examination, one of the most important finding we should not miss that that is visual perception abnormalities like visual neglect, hemianopia, reduced visual acuity, hallucinations, cortical blindness or denial of blindness. This is called as Anton syndrome. Patient can have features like deep tendon reflux can be exacerbated exaggerated deep tendon reflexes patient can have weakness transient weakness but it uh, recovers very fast in coordination in the uh, limbs like cerebellar disease you can get coordination defects stupor coma also can be there because posterior circulation it mimics like uh, sometimes mimic like posterior circulation stroke including uh, cortical visual loss Normally, when we have a stroke-like feature, we usually take CT scan to uh, do the investigation faster. But MRI on MRI can pick up uh, press better than CT scan. So MRI shows patchy areas of vasogenic edema. Uh, it mainly occurs in the posterior, parietal, and occipital lobes. So MRI is an ideal investigation in uh, syndrome. Other areas of brain which can be involved are temporal lobes, brain stems, cerebellum, deep brain structures, basal ganglia, thalamus, corpus callosum. So depending on the site where patient has developed this vasogenic edema, patient can have symptoms of that area. But mostly they are reversible. Sometimes patient can have micro hemorrhages also in MRI. So MRI is the uh, major investigation can pick up uh, press syndrome. Routinely in emergency room CT is done in, in acute uh, strokes but CT may not pick up uh, press syndrome. So we, if we suspect press syndrome it is better to go for MRI. Now MRI Images can show features like hypo-intense lesions in T1. Patchy variable enhancement can be there. T2, you can get hyper-intense areas. Diffusion weighted imaging, usually normal, sometimes hyper-intense due to edema or true restricted diffusion. ADC may show usually increased signal due to increased diffusion but restricted diffusion is in present in a quarter of cases. Sometimes MRI can show hemorrhages also. So these are the common findings in MRI. You can see here MRI in acute condition patient develops posterior parieto occipital lobe hyper intensity. After some time if you repeat the MRI like B film on the B side you can see it is completely reversed. So this is a MRI finding of a press patient. Patient completely recovers uh, immediately within one or two days patient recovers and the MRI taken after 10 days is completely normal. Now when we talk about press syndrome it's a hypertensive emergency mostly associated with eclampsia, preeclampsia, patient can have visual loss, patient can have seizures. So we can manage this case like a eclampsia case itself. So calcium joint blockers like nicardipine, if it is available, we can give. Uh, any calcium joint blocker is okay, nifidipine, if it is available, uh, you can give orally, but never give sublingual nifidipine that suddenly reduces the BP and uh, that deteriorates the patient's uh, condition. So never give sublingual uh, drugs in a hypertensive crisis. So nicardipine IV can be given. Initial dose is 5 mg per hour. Increase every 5 minutes 
2.5 mg per hour to maximum 15 mg per hour. IV labetalol is a very good choice. It is available in our country. It's an adrenergic blocker. It's a beta blocker combined with alpha blocker. So it's a both beta and alpha blocker. Initial dose is around 20 mg slow injection uh, can be given. Then every 10 minutes we can repeat the dose. It should not be given in patients with higher degree heart blocks or severe bradycardia. And severe asthma also we should be uh, we should be very careful in giving any beta blockers. Sometimes it can precipitate asthma but some asthmatic patients it may not precipitate the asthma also. So if, uh, it will be very difficult to tell whether the patient develops asthmatic ep episode during beta blocker therapy. Uh, if there is no other choice we have to try beta blocker and see whether the patient develops uh, V's or not. Since it's an emergency we can try beta blocker if the patient develops V's we can treat with salbutamol. Now seizure prophylaxis is la same like eclampsia it is magnesium sulfate infusion 4 to 6 gram loading dose uh, over 20 to 30 minutes then 2 gram per hour maintenance dose should be given for next 24 hours we have to monitor the magnesium levels because uh, magnesium uh, if uh, the levels go high it can create problem especially in a patient who is having renal failure if the patient is having elevated creatinine and if we are giving magnesium infusion without monitoring definitely patient will go to uh, hypermagnesemia and its complications so we should be very careful magnesium sulfate should be given in seizure disorders in uh, press syndrome or eclampsia whatever it is now we can see the prognosis it's reversible completely normally 70 to 90 percent get complete reversal of the symptoms very rarely residual defects like epilepsy motor weakness can persist recurrent pers press syndrome can present in 4 percent of the patients so we have discussed about one of the common hypertensive crisis normally we may not diagnose it because uh, many patients who is having hypertension can have visual disturbances seizures altered mental status we we call it as hypertensive encephalopathy but if you take an mri uh, and see the patient is having press syndrome we need to treat aggressively because it's a vasogenic edema in the brain if you don't treat properly patient can develop permanent complications so to diagnose press in emergency room is very very important we should not just brand the patient as hypertensive encephalopathy if possible we have to take an mri and if possible bp should be controlled uh, faster than normal situation so that it will be completely reversed without any residual defect thank you